Thanks for watching Lessons in Minutes with J. Lee. Like, share, and don't forget to subscribe. For this session, we're going to look at the double entry system for assets, capital, and liabilities. At the end of this session, you should understand the double entry rules for assets, capital, and liabilities. Now, you're wondering, and I know that you're wondering, what is the double entry system? The double entry system is associated with transaction. If you have missed that lesson, the link is in the description below. It is also associated with T accounts, what is also known as ledger accounts. Now, if you notice, there is a left-hand side and there's a right-hand side. The left-hand side is our debit side and the right-hand side is our credit side. Now, back to double entry. The term double means two. So when we talk about double entry, we're looking at two entries as it relates to a transaction. Another term that is associated with double is twice. So it is a system that enters each transaction twice, once on the debit side and once on the credit side. And when we say debit, we're talking about the left-hand side of an account and credit, we're talking about the right-hand side of an account. Now, in terms of the entry of transactions into ledger accounts, the double entry principle is that for every debit entry, there is a corresponding credit entry for each transaction. So what we're seeing, people, is that the general principle of double entry, once you have debited one account, the other account should be credited and vice versa. So basically, if you have credited one account, then it means that the other account should be debited. So there is no debit without any credit or there is no credit without any debit for a transaction. So ensure that when you're doing your double entry, one account is debited and one account is credited. Now, earlier, I have mentioned the term debiting and crediting. Now, you may be wondering, how is it that you are going to know when to debit an account or even when to credit an account? But don't worry, because there are double entry rules as it relates to assets, capital, and liabilities. Now, let us look at the double entry rule for assets. Now, if it is that there is an increase in asset, you are to debit that particular asset account. And if it is that there is a reduction, you will do the opposite, and that is to credit the asset account. All right? Now, in terms of identifying when there is an increase or decrease in an item, or even which particular item is affected, you will need to understand effects upon assets, capital, and liabilities. And if you have missed that lesson on it, the link is provided in the description below. Okay? Now, let us look at the double entry rule for capital and liabilities. Now, capital and liabilities carry the same rule. And guess what? They are opposite for that of assets. So if it is that there is an increase in either capital or liabilities, that is a credit entry. And if it is that there is a reduction in the capital or liabilities, that carries a debit entry. All right. So remember, for assets, if there is an increase, you debit. If there is a reduction, you credit. And for capital or liabilities, which are the opposite of asset, if there is an increase, you credit. And if there is a reduction, you debit. Now, let us look at the application of the double entry rules. So we have some transactions and we're going to identify the items affected by the transaction, whether there is an increase or decrease. And then we are going to look at the double entry effect. 
which account is to be debited and which one is to be credited. And just a reminder, the double entry principle is that for every transaction, one item is debited and one item is to be credited. So let's go with the first one. Started business with $10,000 cash. And also remember that a transaction affects two items. So from this, started business with $10,000 cash to two items affected would be cash and capital because the owner is investing that $10,000 cash into capital. So the two items affected are cash and cash is an asset and that is an increase in the asset of cash. And the other item affected is capital and there's also an increase. Now let us look at the double entry rule. One item is to be debited and one is to be credited. Now let's review the double entry rule for asset because we have an asset which is cash that is increasing and when the asset increases, we are to debit. So based on that, the account to be debited is cash. Now the other item that is affected is capital and the double entry rule for capital is that when there is an increase, you are to credit. So the item that is to be credited is capital. And apart from that, once one item is debited, then the other should be credited. Let us look at B, bought equipment on credit from G Forbes. Now the two items affected are equipment, but this equipment was purchased on credit. So it means that we are owing for it. And the person that we are owing is J Forbes. Equipment is an asset. And because we purchased the equipment, there is an increase in the value of equipment. And J Forbes, we are owing this person. So therefore, this is a liability. And there's an increase in the value of what we are owing for liabilities. Now, asset, there is an increase in asset. And once the asset increases, you are to debit. So therefore, the item to be debited is equipment. J Forbes, there is an increase in that, which is a liability. And when liabilities increase, you are to credit. So therefore, the account to be credited is J Forbes. Let's look at C. M Stanhope, a debtor, pays us by check. We receive that check. So therefore, bank is affected and the debtor pays us. So therefore, the debtor, which is M Stanhope, is also affected. There's an increase in bank because we have received that amount. And bank is an asset. When asset increases, you are to debit. So the account to be debited is bank. While M stand O, which is a debtor, debtor pays us. There's a re reduction in the value of what the debtor is owing to us. And when asset decreases, you are to credit. So the item to be credited is M stand O. All right? And remember, once there is a debit, there should be a corresponding credit. So once one item is debited, the other item is automatically credited. D, the owner took $2,000 cash for own use. So the two items affected are cash. So there's a reduction in cash because the money is coming out of the business. And because this was taken for the personal use, then it means that there is a reduction in capital. In terms of the account to be debited, cash is an asset. There is a reduction in the asset. So therefore, that should be credited. So the item to be credited is cash. And there is a reduction in capital. And when capital decreases, you are to debit. So the item to be debited is capital. And remember, once there is a credit, there should be a corresponding debit. So once you have credited one item, the other item should be debited. Let's look at E. P Jack, a creditor paid by check. So we're saying that we are paying a creditor by check. So the two items affected are bank. There's a reduction in bank. And there is a reduction in the value of what we are owing to P Jack, which is a liability. Now, the... In terms of applying the rules, the item to be debited would be P Jack because there is a reduction in liability. And once liability decreases, you are to debit. 
So P Jack is debited. And automatically, the item to be credited would be bank. Now, the final thing, borrowed $400 cash from NCB. The two items affected are cash. There's an increase in cash. And NCB, which is loan, that's a liability because we are owing. There is an increase in the value of what we'll be owing for loan to NCB. Now, the item to be debited would be cash because that's an increase in asset. A reminder, once your asset increases, you are to debit. And the item to be credited would be the other item affected, and that is NCB loan. All right? So just a reminder, when your asset increases, you are to debit, and where there is a reduction, you are to credit. And as it relates to your capital and liabilities, once there is an increase, you are to credit. And once there is a reduction, you are to debit. And that takes us to the end of this lesson. In our next lesson, we will look at the actual preparation of ledger accounts, also known as T accounts. And we'll be using these double entry rules to guide us in preparing those ledger accounts. Like, share, and don't forget to subscribe.